when library work is well done, the consequences are obvious. It leads to increased research output. When library work are well developed in an institutional setup, you see a lot of publications getting into good databases, into good journals, and this goes a long way to increase the visibility of the institution itself. There are quite great advantages in promoting library work because not only visibility in, in big, um, you know, um, uh, I mean, among other institutions, uh, in, institutions uh, in China or beyond, but also it leads to world ranking. It leads to good ranking in databases in the world. Today we have the Scopus ranking and we have the webometrics that rank based on different criteria. And library has a lot of role to play in that. It is our, it is a privilege for us to take opportunity of some of these occasions to spread some light and share some knowledge with each other to re-emphasize what I thought we are supposed to be doing. So we welcome this event dearly. And before even I end my speech, I would like to remind all of us of the situation we have faced this year. I just want to talk of the COVID-19. How will library work fit into such a situation? What best could have been done? What are the world best practices? How are students actually managing to get access to resources and making use of the library? We exist to solve a problem. If students do not rely on us, then there is a challenge. And how then do we get them back you know, to the library to do good research? Again, what is the role of ICT and technology in this changing world, in this technology-inclined arena, in helping you know, the library to bring information at the forefront of all of us on our table, in our research, in our teaching, in our learning, in all activities? These are quite great questions we need to ask ourselves. And I believe, as we listen to the speakers and the panelists, we shall um, get answers to most of this question. Gentlemen, I will leave you here. This will end my speech, and this is my first assignment for this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mercy, I don't know, before you proceed, it is also my um, privilege to take this opportunity to introduce some few people who act as panelists for this uh, program. And uh, I will start by Dr. Florence uh, Plucky, who is the university librarian. Dr. Florence, can you wave us so that people can see you? Dr. Florence, are you there? Can you see her waving us? I don't know if you can see Dr. Florence <laughs> waving us. She will speak to us very soon. Dr. Florence is an established academic librarian and is currently the librarian of Accra Technical University. She holds a PhD from the University of Development Studies and has a number of years remarkable career experience. Her current research interest borders on the nexus between knowledge dissemination and the application of modern communication tools towards synergizing uh, indigenous you know, knowledge in academic libraries. Dr. Plucky has published extensively with more than 20 peer review publications in highly repeated domestic and international journals she is a consummate scholar who regularly shares her research findings with the public and the academic community through her participation in domestic and international conferences, seminars, and workshops. So, Dr. Florence, we are happy to have you in our midst. And very soon, the floor will be yours. Thank you. We also have in our midst a great man who is the university librarian for the University of Education of Viniba. This is a powerful man. I will not say much about him. He is in the, in the name of Viscount Boa. Please, Viscount Boa, can we see you by the hand? I think you have uh, you have a chance to hear a lot from him as you speak to us as a panelist. Please, can Thanks. we see you by hand, or is me who is not seeing? Is I waved. I waved. Oh, okay, fine, fantastic. Nice seeing you. <laughs> we can now see you very well. Thank you very much. Thanks for taking some time to be in our midst. Thank you. I will also proceed by introducing Dr. Mark Anthony, 
He is the he's an information scientist, a professional librarian, and a researcher. He's also a teacher, author, and consultant with 21 year experience in research and academic environment. He holds a PhD in information system, MBA in human resource management, MA in library studies, and a certificate in information management. He's currently the university librarian for the University of Cape Coast. Uh, before joining the University of Cape Coast, he had been a librarian for the CSIR Institute of Scientific and Technological Information and a librarian for the Methodist University College, Ghana, from 25, from 205 to 2017. There is quite a lot I can, I can say about him. I will limit it here for now. Can we have Dr. Mark Anthony to just wave us and say hi so that people can recognize his presence here? Dr. Mark Anthony, are you around? You can unmute and say hi to us. Okay, thank you. I can see you. Can you all see him? Uh, you have the chance to speak to us. Uh, last but not the least, let me just introduce Dr. Kojo Atiso, who is the university librarian of Cape Coast Technical University. Dr. Kojo Atiso is the university librarian for Cape Coast Technical University. He is 15 years, he has 15 years experience as a librarian uh, from the CSIR AR, ARI unit. He's a PhD from the University of Missouri in the United States of America. And he served as a consultant for the Islamic University Library. He also served as a consultant for the Meridian University Library and is a reviewer of a few related journals. We'll be happy to see you waving to us. Dr. Kojo Atiso, are you there? Uh, kindly just say hi, unmute yourself and say hi to us so that we can recognize um, your presence. Hello. Hello. Can you Dr. see me? Uh, yes, we, we can't see your video, but we can, we can hear you. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll try. I'll, I'll try and set it up. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm happy to announce that uh, we have quite a number of participants, and the number of participants still is still growing. We can reach 64 participants now, but in actual fact, we are more than 100 because um, some are watching. You know, uh, they they group themselves in the conference room and they are watching. So it's only one link, but it's quite a number of people watching this event. So we are many. Thank you very much. At this point, it's my pleasure to invite the first speaker. Dr. Florence Plucky to give us a presentation uh, on the main topic that group is here today and uh, and that will be on academic libraries contribution to teaching learning and research in tertiary institution an overview of best practices and future trajectory Dr. Plucky, uh, Florence Plucky the floor is yours thank you very much thank you prof Good morning, everyone. You are once again welcome to our MEDI webinar series. Our discussion for today is academic libraries contribution to teaching, learning, and research in tertiary institutions. The topic is very broad, so I'll focus on overview of best practices and future trajectories. To be able to achieve this objective, I will look at five main points. One, oh, an overview of an academic libraries, trends in academic libraries, and the changing roles of academic libraries. And you look at what it means for us in the future, and then we zoom it in ATU library. Well, libraries are seven they provide unlimited access to information to the general public, be it individual, an organization, or the society. They are storehouse of knowledge and wisdom. There are different types of libraries. We have public libraries, academic libraries, special libraries, and school libraries. Academic libraries are libraries of tertiary institution, that is university, including the technical universities, and also post-secondary 
education. That is the colleges, library, colleges, libraries, and some special libraries. For example, BAM libraries, Accra College of Education, ATU Technical University libraries, they are all part of academic libraries. These libraries play an important role to support the teaching, learning, and research in academic institutions. In fact, they are the nerve centers of the heart of this institution. And like what Provisi said, they go a long way to contribute so that their importance cannot be overemphasized. For example, a well-resourced library in an academic institution is positively correlated to the increase of research output, visibility on the web ranking, and also the ranking in the web. Okay. Let's look at some quotes, interesting quotes that relate to libraries and libraries. And before this, let me share some interesting experience when I first joined the University of Ghana. The first time I entered BAM Library, the place was so huge that I didn't find my way out. Later, I got to know if I need something, I have to consult the, those are the reference desk, that is the library assistant. And later, I was also made to know that those information are organized in a systematic manner so that you can easily find whatever you want. And those were the days we were not automated. So you need to also use the catalog card. When you click through the card, you get the call number, you go to the librarian to help you to find your way out. I found this interesting related to some of these quotes. For example, in this age of knowledge and very uh, fake information around, it is difficult for us to identify if this information is authentic or not, or even find our way around. But the libraries and librarians are there to guide us and help us through. And so according to LinkedIn Weeks, in the nonstop tsunami of global information, librarians provide us with floaties and teach us to swim. So according to Patrick, Librarians are tall guys for all knowledge. And then American Library Association states that when you absolutely positively have to know, ask a librarian. All this quotation attests to the fact that library and librarians are very important when it comes to knowledge. How that academic libraries uh, manage. Well, at the background, we have administrators or administration of the library, where the personnel there plan and execute activity to achieve the set objectives of the library. They also supervise human resources and manage resources. All this they do in a way to satisfy the information need of the users. The users use this information for teaching and learning, research, marketing, social, private, career, and what have you. And in order for libraries to continually provide the right information, academic library collect, they organize, and then disseminate this information. So let's look at more details what they do. Well, a technical service and collection management. Librarians are well known by users for their public service and user education. For example, when a user enters a library, when you enter a library, they only see the reference desk and the information service librarian. They also probably know about libraries because of the information literacy programs. That's it. And also research support 
I will give them. We will go into details this at the later part of the of the this the webinar. We also provide the e learners support and then also help in development of curricula. We also do interlibrary loans and document delivery. Other important service behind the scene include acquisition. Libraries or librarians acquire information material. They identify and acquire. This process, after acquisition, the materials are cataloged and classified. Classification is just by giving each book an identification. And this identification helps in the easy retrieval of information. Library also constantly formulate policies and come out with strategies to help us or to help in our activities and programs in the library. Policies include a uh, collection management policies, including reading and acquisition policy. We also have tenanting policy, plagiarism guide, and many other, just to mention a few. Libraries also form consortia to purchase e resources. I won't talk much about that because in Ghana, our consultant, the chair of our consultant is on the line. That is Dr. Mark Antonio. So I believe he will throw more light on that. They bargain and then negotiate for subscription fee, licenses, and what have you. So today, when you go to the net and you are able to assess quality information through your login yeah. credentials of our academic life, please thank the university life because they make this possible for us. In the administration, as I already said, we uh, formulate policies and also come out with strategic plans. Okay. We coordinate wow. bad, uh, budgeting, resources, and we make sure that the facilities in the library are well developed. And we also, most of the time, collaborate and partner with other social organizations either within or outside the world, all in the build to support teaching, learning, and research. Let's look at other relevant activities in the library. Libraries must have always create and maintain systems. Some of the system integrated library management system. For example, most of the libraries, the university libraries in Ghana use Koha and some use other. They create and make sure that those systems are working for, to enhance information delivery. They also come out with or develop a, a institutional repository. Institutional repository is basically uh, preserving the intellectual output of a particular institution. This system is always maintained by librarians. And a school or the university in the lead in this area is KNUSC University, even though almost all the public university now has institutional repository, except the technical universities. We also make sure that our hardware and softwares are working maintenance of software and e-learning and smart learning support. They also undertake many initiatives and projects in the library. For example, this database management, according to your size or your needs, they come out with some of these initiatives. We also host most of the journals of the institution in our website and maintain them. Most libraries also have a learning commons where people go and develop, create, and then develop ideas. And we also support community services. One important activity undertaken in library is conservation and preservation services. I quite remember I once visited VI library and I was surprised 
to see a unique a manuscript. The memo that memorandum that was signed between Ghana, uh, the government and the Akosombo Township when they were building the Akosombo uh, Bridge. Go to BAM Library. Maybe ask of a real book or newspaper for maybe 1970. You'll be able to get access to that. All because they've been able to conserve and preserve this material for posterity. They also constantly digitize, uh, preserve digital materials. And one important thing academic libraries undertake is cultural events. That is exhibition, we support exhibition, seminars and workshop training, book talk, museums and gallery. And to be honest, one institution or academic library that is doing this very well is UCC Library. They have a world, a, a world managed gallery where you can even get the first design of the university. Artifacts of various uh, halls and faculties beautifully preserved for posterity. Yes, all these activities help. The mandate is to provide a healthy space where ideas can flourish, live, grow, and even protect it. Maybe my idea of becoming a library was uh, created when I once visited a library. I've been able to nourish this idea and now I am a university librarian. Who knows, maybe one of these big, big projects we see around, the idea was hatched or was conceived in the library, in a book hidden somewhere in the library. Yes, with all this said and done, you can see that there are so many trending. Things are trending. Library is evolving. Thing, times are changing. And so libraries and librarians must flow with that. Association of college and research libraries frequently come up with research to see what is trending in the world globally. And before I communicate some of them, let me share this interesting experience. As far back as 2006, when I visited, I had a chance to go to Sweden. I've had a chance to visit most of the university libraries. And the way they were using technology, for example, in charging and discharging process, you didn't even have to go through the library. It can just, it's just like an ATM machine, you slot in your card and you can just charge or discharge your books. Books were shelved by a, a machine. And those of us in the African world were, were not near that. In 2012, yes, libraries were advocating for communicating values. We were talking about how to preserve uh, digital content because the you know, era was in the digital e-resources. They were talking about information technology, how to apply information technology in our activities. They were talking about scholarly communication and also user behavior and expectation, how libraries are going to meet users' expectation. Within a shorter space, that is eight years, the focus has changed. They have moved away but yes, some of us are also struggling even to catch up with it. Now, they are, instead of information technology, they are now looking at machine learning, artificial intelligence. Instead of just communicating scholarly, they are now, that is a subscription before reading. Now, they are now looking at how we could read open access. They are negotiating with giant publishers so that they should open their uh, general so that we can freely access them on the internet. They are talking about research data services. This one, we Ghanaians, we are catching up. I think there'll be a webinar on the 8th. 
and then we all have to follow it. So this one, we are also not for Ghana, we are also doing well. We are talking about using social media, that is Twitter, live in chats for communication. And that is what we are also doing at the moment. They are also looking at change management. That is leadership so to meet the changing trends that are coming up. Administrative skill, IT skill, advocacy, and what are you? Yes, this trend and things that we are talking about is also reflecting in the architecture and the environment of the library. Let's look at these two libraries, the one on my right and the one on my left. Which library, which of these libraries would you want your institutions to have? Please, I want to engage viewers. You can write it on the chat with us. Which of these libraries would you want to have in your institutions? This library in European scene encourage creation and co-creation of knowledge where library, library uh, users can go and share ideas, social content, develop ideas and share in partnership. The library setting in the other side, the traditional li uh, library libraries, where one person, one seat, one book. Libraries in other worlds have moved away from this setting. But some of us can relate because this is what we are still doing. Well, it doesn't mean it is that bad, especially in the Ghanaian context. It's we are trying to catch up, to do something. For example, uh, before any course or courses accredited by NAB, library is also part of the process. They will have to come and check our resources and space available and make sure that all these resources can support the program. We are also talking about institutional repository. As I said, it is the archiving the intellectual contents of a university. In 2010, Ajin Jesse and Lamte came out with a publication. And as at that time, it was only in NUSC, which have institutional repository. 2018, I also did a paper. And at that time, almost all the public universities in Ghana have institutional repository. It means we are not doing badly. Almost all the public universities have automated their services even though some of us, especially the technical universities, we are still trying to catch up. Information literacy. Some universities like UCC, Univa, and UDS have embedded information literacy in their curriculum. And also Mr. Boyen Ote is here. He is an expert in information literacy program. I think maybe he will highlight more on that. When you go to BAM Library, well, they also have a nice research common, which also supports creation and co-creation of knowledge. And also we provide research support to our staff. For example, we provide literature set, reference management tools, we organize training on publishing seminars and workshops. And also most libraries host their institutional journals on their websites. So it means that we are also somewhere. Yes, behind all this are the human beings in the library, the human resources. How are they ranked? What are their qualifications? Are they really experts in their field. Well, we have different levels. We have junior staff, senior staff, and senior members. But I would draw more on the senior members. 
Well, when you come to the university, a professor is a terminal position. An university librarian is equivalent to a professor. A deputy or associate librarian is equivalent to associate professor. Senior assistant librarian is equivalent to a senior lecturer. An assistant librarian is equivalent to a lecturer. And then junior assistant librarian is assistant lecturer. You can take up to 10 years in the senior management, that's the senior staff, to become a deputy librarian. But one thing that we have to know, it is not just the year. You can, be, you can have 10 years and still remain as assistant librarian. Why? Because it also goes with publications. You need to have about a minimum of six papers to write from assistant librarian to senior assistant librarian, and about 12 or 10 to become a deputy librarian. So be, to become an university librarian, you need a minimum of 20 or more paper research outputs. This is in the Ghanaian context. And university library is a whole directory. It is not just a head of department because within the university, we have units, we have branches and sessions and division depending on the organogram of the particular library. So a head or the position, the head of department is just a session in the university library. Let's look at the changing rules. Well, in Ghana, what is changing? And what are we also doing to adapt to the changes that are coming? The time wise, you know, in Ghana, most of our information is in uh, oral tradition. And that is where, why they said if an elderly person dies, a whole library disappears. But now there is increasing demand for digital content. So, what do you do? You can look at my publication, my PhD thesis on transcending boundaries, how to bridge the gap between fascist knowledge and then uh, digital or content. When you go to do a UDS space, I believe you can get it. Now, users are looking for virtual library where information, general, and, uh, general publications and databases are organized so that just by the touch of your keypad, you can, put, you can do yourself uh, services. You can get whatever you want by just the touch of your pad. What I read, I know, and I know most libraries in Ghana are doing that. Well, before recently, as uh, the slogan goes, the new normal everywhere, we never thought that face-to-face -face learning or will reduce. Now, almost every university library are on learning management system. Takai, Mondo, what are you? What are we librarians or libraries also going to do to support this? Are we just going to sit down and remain irrelevant? Or are we going to adapt to the changes? People are looking at artificial intelligence, remote library services, where they comfortably sit in their offices or rooms and they can assess their resources in the library. People are talking about using social media, such as email, Twitter, Facebook, media marketing, as we are doing today. It behoves on us as libraries and librarians to catch up. Well, let's look at what we can do. I believe personally what we can do to catch up. One, we have to also rapidly advance in technology and innovation. 
as libraries and librarians. If you just want to sit there and watch book, then I, uh, I beg to differ. We also have to study users expectation and users need because their needs are changing constantly and we must be able to support them. What about scholarly communication uh, landscape? That is the explosion of information, information overload, web resources, the open access. What as a library, what are we going to do? I believe if we are able to also adapt to or embed some of these uh, activities in our programs, we will catch up. What about changes in equipment and tools? Now we are looking at uh, I call three and I call seven. Gone are the days when we are talking about 21 and 22. The question is, do we have the finance to support? I hope my director of finance is watching. What can we do as an institution? Because we can talk about it, but without the money, without the budget, we will not go anywhere. Well, let's come down to ATU. Prof, permit me to share with the audience the state of our library. Well, human resource, we have four senior members, eight senior staff, and five junior staff. Total 17 serving about 15,000 students, excluding lecturers and staff. Can we? That's the question. Books and year resources. Well, once we are part of the consortium in Ghana, we have some year resource materials, but others are adding more. Unfortunately, the subscription fee is also very high. Physical library infrastructure. Currently, we have three separate libraries. That is the Applied Science Library, the BTEC Library, and the HCIM Library. In total, we have uh, three, six, five seating capacities serving almost 15,000 students. Unfortunately, library doesn't have budget for funding on its own. So we all draw from the pool from the university. Well, what can we do also as ATU to catch up? And this is what my focus is. I term the new normal. And that is where I commit my tenure as university librarian so critical look at this area, how to populate or increase our year resources, look for some open educational resources and also create and maintain institutional repository. Physical library development. Currently we don't have research commons and also need some satellite libraries. And also all our libraries with the exception of HCIM are on top of the story building. And so we are unable to provide services for people with disabilities. Staff development. We need continuously to upgrade our skills take opportunity for a workshop and then seminars. And if possible, help recruit qualified university staff, librarians. Information literacy. Even when you have all the resources, it doesn't mean that people can have access or they will be able to use them. Even do everything. So we need 
to plan and then embed information literacy in our curriculum. This will help them not only for their education, but also for lifelong learning, where they can have critical thinking uh, skills, creativity, and lifelong learning. And now that we are talking about plagiarism and turn it in, if we introduce them to information literacy, how to publish, how to avoid plagiarism, it will go a long way and also help with research outcomes of the institution. Information technologies. Currently, even though we are trying to automate, we have not yet achieved that. We also need to digitize. So I'm going to look at how to fully automate our services and also digitize some of the content and use more mobile technologies, adapt the use of more mobile technologies to help ourselves and users. But all this, as I said, it depends on our budget. So we need to come up with income generating activities and also have linkages with some external partners to help us achieve our aim. All this in the bid or with the aim to achieve the vision and mission of ATU. That is to be a center of excellence for teaching, practical training, learning, and research. And the ATU mission of providing life transforming opportunities and experiences for students through teaching, practical training, entrepreneurial skills development and research in ATU training for, for the benefits of society. Let's look at the strategic vision of ATU library. That is to develop a world-class technical university library that supports the information and research needs of the university with truthful service and excellence. Once we are aiming to develop a world-class technical university like this, then we need to do a lot. Well, to be able to achieve this, we have come out with five core values. One, to provide equitable access to all staff and patrons. We also have to do more innovations like we are doing today and many others, things that we can do to help us deliver. In all things that we do, we also pledge to abide by the ethics and integrity of our uh, profession. And the fourth value, we are looking at excellence in all things that we do. And also whatever resources that will be given to us, we must be responsible stewards. Well, let me ask this thought provoking, uh, provoking questions. How well do we as an academic, I mean lecturers, students, members of staff, understand the role the university library plays in support of our work? Do we really understand the library? Do we know its importance? Do we even direct students to the library? A few interactions. We are told, oh, when I get my, I have my handout, I'm good to go. Is that the way to go? Are we making effective use of the library? At the moment, we have some year resources. Are we even aware of that? Do we use them? Well, to conclude, according to Albert Einstein, that is the renowned scientist. He said, permit me to quote, the only thing that you absolutely have to know is the location of the library. Thank you very much, Prof. I'm grateful for the opportunity.
Thank you, thank you. Please, okay. uh, thank you very much. Can you stop your sharing so that we could we could see your face? <laughs> thank you, thank you. That was a very beautiful and great presentation. Uh, we've learned quite a lot of things in these few minutes with your word beautifully arranged in a nice PowerPoint presentation. Dr. Plucky, we are grateful to have you here. Thank you. We are very happy that you are ready to bring your expertise through your proposed vision to support the ATU library <clears throat> and to raise the level to a world-class university library. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, I know people are wondering to ask a lot of questions. Please reserve your questions. You can start tapping some of the questions in the chat box. We shall take note of them and read them appropriately at the right time. But because we have a lot of experts here, some of them who are equally challenged with other occupations, who listen to some few of them, we have about three or four panelists. We shall listen to them briefly and thereafter, we'll start the question session. Uh, please bear in mind, we shall not give more than seven minutes for each of the panelists. Please try to do your presentation within the time that is allotted. This is an online event so that we don't lose track of our listeners. So seven minutes shall be the record time we shall give to all the speakers. And we shall start with Dr. Mark Anthony. Uh, for those people who are not here, I, I did introduce him as being a professional uh, who is a Liberian researcher, teacher, and an author of more, uh, in the, uh, with more than 21 years experience, you know, in a research and academic environment. Uh, he is the university Liberian for the University of Cape Coast. Dr. Mark Anthony, the floor is yours. We give you seven minutes to share some of your few experiences with us. Thank you. Uh, I think we can't hear you. Either you check your microphone or we cannot hear you, Dr. Mark. Anthony. <clears throat> Whilst Dr. Mark, Anthony is setting up to speak to us, um, I just want to remind us that uh, we have quite a number of lecturers and academics from Accra Technical University who have actually joined the program. And this program is also being displayed in the auditorium. Um, there is a big projector where quite a number of students are seated and attending this program. So we welcome you and we acknowledge you all. And uh, we believe that you share your few words with us in terms of question. And um, I just have a message that quite a number are in the auditorium listening to us at the moment. Thank you very much for your attendance, student. Please make an active participation by typing your questions in the box and also reserving some for the question sessions that is yet to come in some few minutes. Dr. Marcantoni, is it better? We still cannot hear you. We still cannot hear you. Um, maybe if it persists more, probably we may have to swap so that you take some few minutes to set up um, properly and then uh, and, and then we can move on. And then we can move on. And um, we can give you one minute more. And uh, once we're giving you this one minute more, let me share with you a picture of attendees in the auditorium. Um, once we wait for you, let me share my screen. And um, this is a picture of people listening to our program in the auditorium of ATU, for instance. And um, uh, there are other uh, people also sit sitting at different places. Ask them when we get more picture, I will share with you. So, 
So, Doc, um, for convenience sake, we'll give you some time to set up, but uh, we'll quickly run back to our panelist, Mr. Viscount Boy, who is from the University of Education of Winneba. Mr. Viscount, if you are there, please kindly um, take up the floor. We'll give you seven minutes exactly to share your experience as a librarian with us. Uh, remember that Mr. Viscount is the university librarian of the University of Education of Winneba. The floor is yours. Thank you. Okay. Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mr. Viscount. We are also looking for the slide here, and very soon we'll be in touch with you. I think. Uh, are you going to share your screen? Yes. Oh, I shouldn't share. Oh, let me speak. So you have the right. You can just share your screen and, and open your presentation. Okay. No share. Yeah, we can see it now. You can see that no, not the screen. We can see your screen. Uh, if you could put it in presentation mode. Oh, okay. Give me only that one. Go up. Okay, all right. <clears throat> yes. Okay, I will save seven minutes, so I'll try to probably jump over some of them or very brief <laughs> on them. So yes. the place of the library, of the academic library in tertiary institutions, the name is Viscount Buenote Bue. I'm the university librarian of University of Education, Winneba. Okay, so the goal of every library is at that time, um, to provide information to support teaching, learning, research, and administration in the university. This means that before the teacher goes to the classroom, they must read, use books from the library or articles from the library to prepare to meet the students. It also means that the student must also read first before they meet their lecturers in the lecture room so that they have a faint idea of what will be taught in the classroom. Then after teaching, they go back to learn more. Then we, we also provide information to support research and then administration in the university. Okay, the core values of university libraries, academic libraries are that librarians normally will listen happily to, uh, librarians must happily play their roles to make their universities achieve their vision and mission. The, our roles are normally linked to the vision and mission of our institutions. Therefore, if you don't play your role well, it means that you are not helping your university to achieve their vision or mission. And then librarians must listen to their customers and accord them the courtesy and respect. Don't say because uh, you appear to have control of uh, information, then you go about just uh, boosting yourself up to your uh, client or your users. You must show them respect and then courtesy. And then we provide access to education by one, teaching information literacy skills. Information literacy simply means that knowing that you need information, how to get information, how to organize the information, how to evaluate the information to know uh, that it is, um, it is credible. And then lastly, how to use information in ethical manner said that you don't breach anybody's rights and anybody's rights. Okay. Then we provide leadership and expertise in the use of information and technology. You don't know how to search, we teach you how to search. You have uh, some digital devices or you come to the library 
have a computer lab in the course of using you don't know how to know find your way through the library is ready to assist you then we are involved in network we network with other um universities or um institutions to provide services to our communities okay the library helps ensure equity in education we do this by providing access to information and ideas unimpeded by social, cultural, and economic constraints. This means that the information that we provide is open to everybody. You may come from my town, Adan. In spite of that, it's open to you. You have equal access as somebody who is from uh, uh, Inzima or somebody who is uh, from uh, Temali or uh, Gonja or Dagomba. We don't look at all those things. We see human beings as human beings. And then we don't look at whether the person is poor or the person is rich. Equal access. Then we ensure free and equal access to information and then ideas. I wouldn't say that because this person is a lecturer, I'm giving him advantage over a student. We don't do that. The, the library impacts academic achievement for students and assists them in one lifelong learning preparing individuals for productive employment. So we assist, the library makes students to learn on their own through the material that we have in the libraries, learn on their own for the exams as well as for their personal life and then even after school. And then we promote the enjoyment of reading by having some leisure readings. You may be reading science or technology. You could take a coffee, I will not book this earth, my brother, and then read is for all the enjoyment and then or you want to uh you will be reading um business you could take a book a poem book a poetry book and then that pick one and then just read they will be pre preparing individuals for responsible citizenship we prepare students so that they become responsible in future that's why we apply some uh, penalties in the world, in the library. If you default to bring book, we you know we punish you. Now, library use and academic performance. Oftentimes we hear people, they will tell you when I was in school, I didn't go to the library, but I was able to you know, finish my course. So today, such people, uh, the library is not important. But studies have been done, that shows that there is a strong link between um, library use and academic performance. Lance 1990, line 1990, Lance 1994, Lance et al. 2004, our review that going to a library or even having a library in a school clearly influences the student's what? Results. Just by having a library in a school alone has positive, positive impact on the student's results. Then students success in education is linked to the use of what libraries here where this is said by uh, zumda and haranda 2008 goda and pattern 2011 cox and janti 2012 allison 20 um 20 then top luke's beaver and he 2016. In Ghana, we've not done any research to show whether there's a correlation between uh, library usage and uh, academic performance. If it's done, I've not come across it. But from um, speaking from University of Education, we have collected anecdotal evidence that shows that a lot of our students who get first class, second class, or best students are very often uh, users effective uses of what um our library i think three years or so ago there was w one student who had first class in physics education she was the first female and the second uh um person to have had first class in physics education in our university very often she was using the library so she was even called library prefect then just last week, some lecturers came into my office, and one of them paid tribute to the library and uh, the librarians that uh, uh, the libraries that uh, they used when they were students. 
one told me he even went to um, Ashanti um, Regional Library in Kumasi and told them that when he was in school, he used the library extensively. And that explains how he became a, um, a PhD holder and a senior lecturer in the university. I listened to our renowned professor, Professor Aloti. He gave a speech some time ago, and then during reception, somebody asked him a simple question. You may think this is a foolish question, but well, the question was, how did you become a mathematician, a famous mathematician? All that he laughed and then explained. He said the father was selling books. And the books, they were mathematics books. So the books became like his library. Anytime he went to the shop, he would take the books and then what? Read. And work the I mean the mass, uh, what do you call it, uh, questions in them. And that made him to become what? Um, at mathematician. So it shows that books or libraries can help one to become who he wants to be in future. Okay. Then in libraries, we have we assist our universities by appointment of all liaison librarians. What they do is that they they are appointed to the various faculties where you have a lot of librarians, you can even appoint them to uh, departments. They assist in selection of books and journals in the disciplines. So the business um, faculty or department librarian, for instance, will be involved in selecting books and journals for the, uh, that discipline. He will work in uh, what do you call it, in cooperation with the faculty to do this. Then they update the faculty about the library services and the future plans that we have. Then they facilitate workshops on library resources. They, if there's a workshop, something that lecturers should know or uh, students should know, they will organize these things for them. Then they teach students how to use the resources, the e resources, as well as what um, information literacy. We have been running this information literacy program since 2013, and it has proved to be very, very what useful for us. Then they disseminate information on new publications. Where we have new publications in their discipline, it becomes their responsibility to, to um, share this to their people. Then we also share information on scholarly communications. And scholarly communications. So I would like to conclude, given that my time appears to be up, by saying that uh, using the words of uh, Luke 1924, he said, uh, he described the library as the heart of a university. This means that if uh, there are no libraries, um, your university will not be able to function. The 1924 is very old. Someone says, ah, why do you choose um, um, 1924 and not say 2020 or 2019? This is one problem that we have from lecturers at times. You send students to go for information, you said you want the latest one. But at times you have to go back to get what you call it, uh, the, uh, the person who said this. This one was said by Luke 1924. He was the first person who coined this. Subsequently, it has been rehashed by some other people. Therefore, today, if I want the information on, to use this phrase, it is good that I go to Luke 1924, and not say Kokuvi, who's used it in 2020. So this explains why I've used Lib 20, 1924. I hope I've been able to know. I mean, um, um, make a very good presentation to you. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are very grateful. Uh, Mr. Viscount is the university librarian for University of Cape Coast. So we are very grateful for your presentation, your very insightful presentation. I'm sure we are listening and uh, members are really digesting um, the fact that you are bringing uh, out of your presentation. We are grateful. Um, at this moment, I don't know if people 
are really worried about bringing their questions or they still want me to wait until uh, we reach the question session. But oh. I would mind to take some one or two questions now. Yes. So that um, Mr. Viscount can address them quickly. But we we'll still have the bigger floor for the questions to come. So I will, I will open the floor at this moment to take some one or two questions. And after that, we will listen to the next speaker, Dr. Kojo Atiso. So kindly bring questions and then we shall allow you. You can just raise your hand. Please, uh, Baba is raising his hand. Allow him so that we could listen to some few questions. Yeah, Baba Morrison, you are on the floor. Kindly unmute yourself and speak. Morrison, you are on the floor. Can you unmute yourself and speak? You are still muted. Yeah, I think uh, she's not coming forth. So I don't know if there are other questions. Feel free if you have any question, uh, just um, raise your hand or mute yourself and you could speak quickly to our brother. Okay. Yes, so whilst they are coming up with questions, let me ask my own. Okay. I think we have a nice presentation and when I pick you from Dr. Florence Plucky's presentation, she stressed that there is a need for us to become a world-class technical university library. I would like to ask, what is the state of Winneba University Library? Are they up to the world-class standard? Are there challenges to, to get there? Oh, and um, this is the first one. And the second question is, what is the impact? What I want you to zoom into the impact of a good library standard on what? The student learning experience. Student learning experience. These are two questions. Thank you. Okay. Th thank you very much. Um, UEW library is, is a world class standard. Yeah. <laughs> we have, yes. Uh, we are connected to the internet. We have uh, books, latest ones. We could get 2020. We have even ordered for some who become as 2021 uh, um, uh, editions. Then uh, we also belong to uh, the consortium. So we get our um, online uh, journals. Uh, well, we have professionals who know manage the library. And we provide excellent services to our readers or our users. We don't limit them. Anytime at all they need information, they send and then uh, we check even when we are at home and then we send to them. Uh -huh. Then um, our great, we are automated. Our greatest problem is space. The university has about um, 84,000 students, but our city capacity is less than 1,000. And this is a very big problem for us. However, it's being addressed. There's a design to build a six-story uh, library complex. And I think when this is done, it will you know, reduce this problem in Winneback. And um, some similar complex we built in Kumasi, Mampong, and then uh, Jumako. So we are on, on course. Thank you. Any other question? Thank you very much. I think you are here to address the second question on the impact of student learning experience. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes. Um, in my presentation, I did tell you that um, from anecdotal evidence, students who use our library very often do get first class or second class uh, upper, very often. Uh, I mean, quite recently, um, we did um, uh, graduation in the master's level with the best students in literature was somebody who spent most of their time in the library here. So there, there is a, a, a correlation between library usage and, and uh, um, students' performance. But we have not documented this. That's why I said this word, uh, anecdotal or uh, evidence. Yes, yes. But uh, students' use of the library depends mostly on the lecturers. If the lecturers use the resources, then they are familiar with the resources that we have then they will ask uh, students 
you come and what use them uh, so for uh, the student to use the library it means that the lecturers must also what use what the library in our universities what our lecturers are doing okay. they use the library and they encourage the students to also, to use, also the use the library, the library. Uh, that some of them they don't even want to use any hand, hand uh, what you call it handout at all for mm -hmm. their students so when they come to libraries like science faculty no handouts you see these science students removing the books and what um, um reading them no handouts at all uh -huh. so this is one way that uh, we are meeting the needs of our users thank you very much thank you doc for sparing some of your time to spread knowledge with us we are very grateful and um, uh, we'll continue the session with the next presentation and we believe you'll be there to answer some few questions at the end my dear okay. student please feel free to ask questions uh, any times what i would like to recommend you is that please write your questions and if you have access to a computer we have a chat uh, a chat tool in which you can write your questions and we are taking note of them so if you have your question they will read it and then uh, the panelists will address them if you are in group you can still write your question on a paper and give to the facilitator there and he will write them on the in the chat box and we shall pick them and then we'll respond to them at the uh, appropriate time I think I'm grateful that some few questions uh, are already uh, listed here. At the appropriate time, we'll bring them. We are taking note of them, and then the panelists will address them. At this point, it's my pleasure to invite the next panelist to also share some few words with us, please, in seven minutes strictly. And this is Dr. Kojo Atiso, who is also the university librarian for the Cape Coast Technical University. Please help me welcome him to share his experience with us in the next seven minutes. Dr. Kojo, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Ye yes, Doug, we can hear you. Uh, can you hear me really well? <laughs> we can really yeah, we hear, can you. hear you. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. So uh, <clears throat> it's a pleasure to be part of this. Uh, but we cannot uh, see you. Can you share your video? Oh, I did. Uh, let, let me see. Oh, video. No, is it picture we are seeing here? No. Oh, please go on. Okay. I think they can see your video. So I think it's fine. You can see. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, I, like I was saying, uh, I'm grateful to be part of uh, this uh, presentation. Uh, I have no intention to recalibrate what has been said by my uh, colleagues already, my senior colleague, uh, Mr. Boy, and then uh, my sister, uh, 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 Dr. Ploke. I just want to share the rule of, the main goal of every university library, which everybody knows, that's to provide resources to ensure good teaching, learning, and research. That is the focus of every university library. And to do that, you do that in two main formats, the print and then the electronic. Now, in modern times, in contemporary times, there is this shift towards digital uh, 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 information. That is everything going electronic. But however, the print resources are also equally important. Because especially as Africans, most of our collections are still in print. If you have to look at the publications of great, great, great Ghanaians, it's hardly that you find a lot of these ones in electronic, except that some library has taken it upon them to digitize them and to put them in some archive. It is upon this reason that I think that uh, while we think that uh, digital information is important, we shouldn't rule out the fact that it's equally as important as the electronic one. Second, the, the second reason why uh, print format is important because as African, most of our knowledge is collected on print formats. Our indigenous knowledge. If you look at my CV, I have worked at CSR for 15 years before uh, travel and before I came, came back to, to, to take up this position. I can tell you there's a lot of research done on indigenous knowledge, plant medicinal knowledge, 
what is the knowledge the African has about whatever. Currently, the situation on the ground is on COVID-19, and we are trying to come up with a, a research, uh, uh, a paper on that. A lot of research has been done about how Africans preserved, how Af Africans contained pandemics of this nature. You remember many, many years ago, many before we were born, in fact, people think COVID-19 is the first world pa pandemic. No, there has been a swine flu, Spanish flu, everything. And anytime Africans have had a way of containing them. When this COVID-19 came, we appear to have forgotten everything, just relying on somebody until somebody somewhere in somebody, somebody somewhere, I think Kofodia Technical University reminded them that, oh, Africa, we had a traditional way of containing something. This is called the steam technology. And people who started doing that started feeling relief. So this is to tell you that uh, Africa print or that most of our knowledge is in print format and we, we might not shy away from that. Now, the problem about the printing in Africa is about preservation. Go to all the university libraries today. You are going to see a stack of information, good journals, good papers. Go to CSIR, go to Atomic Energy, go to Mampon Center for um, uh, Plant Medicine. A good deal of information is there. Unfortunately, all of them are packed in the stack somewhere. They have not been, they are becoming brittle. Very soon, we are going to lose track of all those information. Do libraries have the question I want to ask it? Do libraries have a plan to preserve some of these things for the future? So what happened is that research that has already been done is sometimes repeated and repeated. And anytime you, 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 you undertake a research activity, you know how much money goes into it. So for this reason, I will say we must give equal attention to print uh, literature as well as electronic literature. By the way, let's go to the second format that uh, academic libraries used to, uh, 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 to disseminate information. That is the electronic, the digital. Now, uh, as a, an academic library, you are supposed to have a, you know, an integrated library system, ILS. And ILS comes in two uh, 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 variations. There are two variations of them. The free one, the open source one, which everybody can just download and work on it and then use it to, you know, uh, 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 populate the university's uh, uh, collections, Koha, which everybody's using nowadays. Then we also have, uh, you know, bigger universities like Tech or Legon, who also have uh, this proprietary. Even that, I, I, I know most of them were supported by foreign organizations. Yeah. So while these are important, the, the, the importance of these, uh, these, level of not, uh, uh, technology is that it makes information access very easy. You could just be sitting home, you could just be sitting home and assessing, I could sit here and assess what is in uh, my senior Bramita Boys library, uh, Florence's library. Yeah. The problem though, is that most African or most Ghanaian university cannot uh, afford a proprietary, which is more efficient and maybe better with better after sales service. So we all have to uh, uh, zero in on the, the, the free one, Koha, which is also not bad. But, you know, we all know what a free thing is. Like Americans say, there's no free lunch under the sun. So it also comes with a, a lot of uh, challenges. But for now, that is what we are doing. Okay. Now, so right now, I think that it is clear that both the print and electronic are, are, are equally important. Now, there's one question with Dr. Dr. Plocky asked at the end of her presentation, and I think for me, this is the most intriguing one. She says that, is the library playing its role? Well, we are trying to play its role, but why are we, the question I want to ask is, why are we losing, uh, losing? Every library, library in, at least in Ghana, is losing its, uh, 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 how do you call it, patrons. The only time you go to BAM library, or CCTU library or A2 library, then you see a pack of students is when examinations are, are coming. Why? Just because they think that everything they can get from uh, the library, they can also get it from the internet. But Mr. Boyer already made a point that uh, there's a correlation between people who use the library and those who do not. So the question is, what is it playing the role? Well, maybe not. 
So it's all about the poor perception that the library has, especially when it, 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 it come to Ghana. People think that the library is just a place where, you know, a dump of books or old books where anybody at all. There was a time a professor asked me, oh, I hear librarians can now become senior lecturers. I'm like, what? This guy is a professor and he's talking like this. If he's a professor and he's talking like this, it means he has a, he doesn't hold the library in high esteem. Maybe not intentionally, but he doesn't know what the library has to do. So the poor perception. Now, the way to arrest this situation to me, for me, is not a blame game. Oh, you don't respect you. I mean, putting pointing fingers is not a thing. I think librarians have to do more, have to do more. And there is something called librarians do in this country, and maybe also outside the world, which doesn't help us. Everything that we do is like stay in the bubble. When we say stay in the bubble, that is doing things that you were already just trained for. Even if you were writing research publications, research or whatever we want to do, we want to research things just related to our environmental role. For instance, the role of computers in learning. I mean, this is no longer researchable. Unfortunately, people are still doing that. Oh, the role of internet and academic work. No, it's like you are still in the bubble the role of uh, maybe uh, uh, free spaces, uh, senior members common room to uh, 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 how that allows or that contributes to learning. No, you can stay outside the bubble or you can join forces with people. After all, what is our, 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 our role? Our role is to ensure that information gets to the user. Who are the users? The users are the faculty, student and staff. What are the faculties? What is the faculty researching on? Are they researching on geodetic engineering to get to the Department of Geodetic Engineering? Look at their problems and try to fashion out some research around that. Now, when you are working with them, it is then that they recognize how important are you them, and by that you, you stay outside the bubble and then you also get important and then your library is getting importance and then your library is becoming important. Now, Last week at CCTU, I organized a training for uh, uh, lecturers in renewable energy. And for those of you who don't know, the technical universities have been given niche area, that is special areas that you should, you should work on. And they were very amazed. This is what the library can do. The library cannot just say the library, I mean, just order books and expect that it, it, you, you'll be giving that attention and expect that you will have a good perception. So we cannot always stay within our bubble. We can also stay as about joining our forces, the people that we serve. And then that is where we get the importance, the attention we deserve. Now, uh, permit me to talk a little bit about CCTU library. CCTU, uh, until I came here, I didn't know that uh, uh, they have such a beautiful edifice. They have a huge library. And then uh, unfortunately, we are under-resourced by way of so many things. Fiscal collection, we have 26,000. Uh, a huge deficit, I would say beyond Tech and Legon, I think we are the next when it comes to, and maybe uh, uh, UCC, I think we are, we are the next in terms of uh, the kind of library building we have. Yeah, but we are under-resourced by way of technology. We didn't have internet many, many months ago, but now we have internet. And then fortunately, now we also have uh, um, some of the, we are part of this uh, colleague, the Consortium of Academic and Research Libraries in Ghana. So we get some of those free e-resources to uh, help our, this thing, uh, our users. The problem is we only have four senior members and the problem everybody knows in Ghana, there's only until recently there was only one library school. I think there are think private you should, uh, you should be wrapping up because of the five. <laughs> yeah, okay, so so generally, I, I, I would say that uh, CCT we are doing great. And uh, uh, what else can I say? What a big program! What a great program! Thank you, thank you. Oh, okay, thank you very much. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, yes. thank you, thank you. <laughs> You've done very well. Thank you. So, um, I think um, uh, we have reached um, um, uh, we have reached the point where we have to uh, take some few questions. Okay. 
we have reached the point where we have to take some few questions and then answers. Uh, already, some of them have been typed in the chat box. I want to do my question. And uh, let me read some few ones. Uh, we can take it from there. And uh, the floor is also open. So people who want to speak and ask their question, we shall allow them to do so. But let me take a first question from Dr. Evelyn Bentil. Dr. Evelyn Bentil is the director in charge of uh, guidance and counseling at Accra Technical University. And I read, hello, Dr. Florence. You showed pictures of a modern library and a traditional one. What is ATU doing to achieve a modern library? Dr. Florence, could you address quickly this um, question? Thank yes, you. thank you, Prof. Um, Prof, it's a gradual process and also budgets and then uh, issues. And so I think we have started something. For example, even uh, marketing ourselves. And if also there is a high demand for library service, it, it is supply and demand. If there is a high demand for library service, I think management will see the need to assist in this direction. We have started uh, putting something in place, like uh, trying to automate our library and putting other strategies in place. Also asking for a purpose-built library, which is an ongoing discussion. But I think everything also, most of the thing depends on management. And so, Prof, I think we can also continue from there. <laughs> I think we are doing our best. Um, a journey of thousand miles uh, uh, begin by a step. You see, we, we are somewhere. We, 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 have, we are somewhere, and I think you could see the commitment of management to actually raising the image of the library. But like you say, it's gradually, especially that it demands a lot of um, financial resources. And this is not just sand uh, on the way that we can collect. So things will happen, but they will happen with time. So we we'll continue giving you full support so that the changes can actually uh, be brought to our university and to the community at large. We'll take a second question. Uh, the person did not specify the name, but I read the question. From the arrangement of the world-class library we saw in the picture, I want to ask if currently libraries are supposed to provide people with quiet and serene environment for reading and meditation or for interaction. So any of you can pick up this question again and let's hear from you. Dr. Florence. Yes, Prof. Um, I think in libraries, there are different sections. Yes. Yeah, there are different sections. I mean, we have that quiet place for individual. Well, you can even go and book a key and then stay, go there and do your own research, peacefully do your research without interaction. And also we have the social space, the market space. And we have the training and workshop space. We have various Play, uh, spaces in libraries, and so if we have that is why we are demanding for a purpose board library. If you have a purpose built by a library and all these spaces are created, you have the social space where we can have interaction and collaborations, and we have the spaces also where you can do individual and, uh, meditation. Thank you. Okay, uh, I don't know, Dr. Tiso, would you like to share some word with regard to that question? Yes. Yes, Prof. Thank you so much. So, like she said, uh, you know, we are like, <laughs> they call us a developing economy. So, we are developing into things uh, into, uh, to, 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 to get to some standard. Elsewhere, when we say library, uh, it's not just a place where you, you find a book. So you go to some libraries, you don't find books. You go to that library, you find books, and then you go to the back library one, so you find both. Now, gone were the days where you go to a library, they tell you, shh, 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 don't talk. These days, you can go to a library to have a, you can have a quiet time with your friends. That is where you develop your research ideas, these research common things. Uh, I, I've been in the state for a long time, and uh, on any time I wanted to have a, a, a good time, I mean, to meditate on, not, 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 not 
religious meditation by on my research work and things like <laughs> i would book online i'm not go, i don't go to the library i do that over the phone i book online and then the key by the time i go the key is there even i didn't have a key you just have to open it with something your uh, card or something and then your you know you connect with your friends so the answer is true every library today must have uh, senior members come on uh, uh, I mean, a lot of the commons, the G, uh, right. how do you call them? Research commons and quiet places where you can go and have uh, some, that's where the research uh, 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 ideas emanate from. Great, great. Thank you very much. Okay, yes. we'll take on Dr. Mr. Viscount on this question. How do university libraries in Ghana encourage lecturers and professors to publish academic books? How do university libraries in Ghana encourage lecturers and professors to publish academic books? Dr. Viscount, can you share some word with us? Uh, please, I'm um, Mr. I'm um, Mr., not Dr. Oh, it's, so, so it's, it's another. <laughs> thank, okay. you. Th th thank you. Um, first, first of all, we make resources available. Uh, in the library for lecturers to use, to read, and out of that, they can write their, uh, their work. Two, we also assist them to identify public uh, publishing houses or companies who can assist them to publish their work. Okay. Yes. And then we also run workshops for them, um, how to get what published. You, you run a lot of workshop to yes. actually train people and raise yes. awareness yes. as yes. how to publish academic books. And, and that is quite um, very essential. I think that is integral part of the job of the library to be running yes. from time to time trainings. Yes. To raise awareness and also to to drive the publication uh, and then article writing, book writing, and other activities that pertain to academic work in the university. So I don't know, Dr. Florence. Will I will, like I will, to I will confer Dr. with Dr. Plucky. I have uh, yes, yes. I have um, um, something like that at uh, another time. Then I, I can make a presentation to you and your your, your staff. I mean, to be to, very uh, good. Thank yes, you. Uh, at no cost. <laughs> at no cost. <laughs> thank you. We are grateful. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prof, uh, may, may I come in here? Yeah, I think Dr. Flocky wanted to say something. To oh, me. okay. And oh, no, come to no, if I'm okay. Oh, fine. So we are, we move to Dr. Kojo Atiso, please. Yeah, yeah. So like uh, our senior brother, uh, uh, Mr. Boy said, uh, the role of the library is not just giving information, but it's also to train some of its users in the areas of publication th and things like that. In fact, uh, we, you must know that uh, lecturers are trained to teach. They are not trained information professionals. There are situations where lecturers have had themselves into trouble because they didn't have good, maybe, advice from, for instance, many times lecturers go and they publish, they write good journals and then uh, good papers and then they go publish in predatory journals. It is the responsibility of the library to every now and then research and train lecturers to know which journals are good, which journals are not good, after all, how many journals know what an impact factor is? What is the impact factor? These are areas the library must research and know and then into so that they can impart this information to the lecturers. Because mm -hmm. it is the, the library is like the link between them and then the journal. If you don't do that, they are going to fall into trouble. Uh, recently in a public university, people had applied for promotion and in fact, they did a good job. Before long, most of their journals were, they didn't know most of their papers were published in fake journals, what we call predatory journals. This is some uh, a responsibility of the library. So like he said, the library must be up and doing by training its users and to know the information landscape at all times. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. It's getting interesting to me, and I think it's getting really interesting. We are sharing quite a lot of information, and uh, we still want to remind you that this is um, the second webinar series organized by the ATU 
library on the topic academic library contribution to teaching learning and research in tertiary institution an overview of best practices and future trajectory and we have a wonderful question from an administrator here he said he listened to all these presentation and supporting submission and he realized that no mention is made anywhere of non-teaching staff that is administrators and his question is to find out are they administrators stakeholders when it comes to library issue and where actually how do they fit into the game thank you very much dr Flor dr plucky can you take out this question <laughs> and then we come back to uh, dr uh, atisu uh, prof uh, they are stakeholders because most of uh, our requests they have to approve them and then so if they are requests come to them they might ask them for something and they don't approve nothing will go on and so please they are stakeholders if they also know the importance of libraries and then yes. when there is something concerning libraries they will know how to address it thank you okay. so they are really a stakeholder thank you we need to hear more views uh dr tiso could you share with us uh, the administrators are asking how does the library activity impact on to them are they stakeholders if they are how do they come into the game Yes, uh, they are part and parcel. So the library and the university library is like a faculty. How do you run a faculty with just lecturers or with just librarians? A faculty is, is like a full university, can be, if you want, can be a full university on its own, a miniature university. So they are part and parcel of the, uh, of, of the library setup. For instance, my administrator, anytime I hear of any library conference or, or anytime I hear uh, I organize uh, a training for my lecturers. I make sure she comes around to know what is uh, what is going on, including the finance staff. And they must know what we do. If they don't know what you do, how can they support you? If you relegate them to the background, trouble for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Viscount Boy, please share some word with us with regard to the contribution or the impact of library activities on administrative staff in the university setup. Please, are you there? Otherwise, what I'd like to share myself in this regard is that if you watch the promotion scheme of administrators, as they get higher, they need to even publish sometimes. Yes. They need to have some publication, good reports, and uh, all these point to academic activities. So if you are to write good research papers, write very impressive papers, position papers, that will lead to your promotion. You still need to read. And that is where you have to also be part of the library activities, definitely. Mr. Okay. Viscan Boy, please share some more. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. They are, they, are, they are part of us. So anytime we organize uh, workshops, we get them involved so that they get to know what we do. And they will probably, in our absence, they'll be able to explain things to some other people. Then we get them involved so that they'll be able to acquire some skills and then some basic you no know, information um, set for um, users they should be able to to, to do yeah. then there is one outstanding there was a time i even national level i uh, made my administrator to attend a study conference in accra and then the, one of the public universities um the librarian uh, made it possible for his administrator to attend an international conference, I think in uh, Singapore. Uh, so people, some are doing that. We must see them as people who play critical roles in the in the in the library, and not just like supporting us. When we we, we give them that chance, I think uh, to be in our interest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We had a contribution from uh, a member, and uh, that's Mr. Taki. He, he says that library staff also conduct quite a number of literature searches with the faculty and this help them in their research and publishing activities. We have here a specific question uh, by uh, Colette Ohiniba. I hope I'm pronouncing well, to Dr. Kojo. And the question is to ask whether, what do you mean by proprietary type of integrated library management system? Proprietary types of integrated library management system. Oh, no, so the word I use are proprietary. So, uh, so all my uh, all librarians know this. So to integrate 
to this, the technology that is used to populate the a library's collection. We have the free ones, and then the ones that are not free. The free one that we are all using in Ghana today is called the Koha. It is the open source one. The proprietary, or which would belong to somebody, which you must buy, like the Millennium. I think we need buy, I don't know whether Mr. Boy can testify to do it. I, I, I guess they used to use Millennium, and then Legon used to use Alexandria. So I'm, so in a nutshell, I'm talking about the free ones plus the, the one that you need to buy. But the one that you need to buy, <laughs> they're expensive. That's why we are reverting to the free. So that's what I mean. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Another question. How does the Cape Coast Technical University deal with the copyright issues when you digitize local books? Local How does book. the Cape Coast Technical University deal with copyright issues when you digitize local books? Well, uh, the copyright laws, the copyright laws are straight and stringent, and every library must abide by them. That is number one. Number two, Cape Coast Technical University has a legal office. Everything we do, last week I had to sign an MOU with somebody, with my vice chancellor with this thing, and it had to go through the legal office. So anything legal is done, you know, one, using the normal copyright rules, and then the legal office. So oh. there's no question about it. I don't think we can just photocopy somebody's book or digitize it and put it on a repository. There are strange, stringent rules and regulations that we follow. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Dr. Plucky, we have a question here for you. A member contributed and says that it's been observed that students do not patronize, do not uh, actually get involved into library activities. The libraries are redundant and that they do not visit the library, they don't use them for study, they don't use them for learning, they don't use it because perhaps maybe teachers do not push them. People are encouraged with the issue of handouts. They hand out, uh, limit student, you know, uh, ability to search further information and to enrich themselves. And so what do you have on the table to make sure that student interest into the library will actually be heightened? Okay. Uh, Prof, please, this is a partnership issue uh, from lecturers and the staff of the library. And so lecturers should know that even though if you give your students handouts, you must still encourage them to come to the library by giving them assignments, which will force them to come to the library. Also, one way we are trying to engage students is by meeting the leadership of students. Recently, I met the leadership leadership of outgoing SLC president. And I was having some discussions with him, telling him that anytime there is an activities on campus, consider uh, student activities, he should invite, he should give us a slot so that we have some interaction with them. And today, the webinar series, we make sure that we have provided a space for them to listen because they claim they don't have access to their Wi-Fi. Their Wi-Fi is not strong. And so we are doing some of these things to encourage them. And they also complain the ambience, but we are trying our best with the support of the management and lecturers. We are trying our best so that we will turn things around. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That is great. But I think it's a question that we need to hear from all the panelists. So can we also hear from <laughs> Dr. Tiso, please? The floor is yours. Yes, Prof. Thank you so much. It, it, it sounded like in qualitative survey, we, we, we call it saturation. That is, somebody answers a question and then uh, another person repeats. So to encourage, in fact, like I said in my presentation, uh, we are losing our clients, our patrons, big time all over the world, especially in Ghana. Now, why? It's because they think that whatever they can get from the library, they can get it off their phone. But that's, that's false. That is why Professor Bue uh, made the correlation between you know, uh, 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 library attendance and you know, uh, uh, re re research work or whatever. But in the participant Q&A, 
I, somebody has a question that's so intriguing. I, I hope I can get that question. Say, how does uh, library attendance ensure? It's not just library attendance. It's having interest in what the library has, the information resources. Library attendance ensure. No, no, sorry, no, sorry, no. Sorry. Uh, sorry, please. Kindly go ahead. Please yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so uh, the library attendance that we are talking, the interest in the library is not just waking up one morning and going to sit in the library, pray four times a day. It's not by an attendance list. It's about having knowledge of what the, the library resources are. Uh, what is in the area of whatever, uh, for, for instance, we are here, uh, uh, a mechanical engineer. What kind of resources that the library uh, uh, have on that? What kind of e-resources? What kind of print resources? What kind of research? What are our conferences? Conferences? What kind of workshops are coming over? Who are the speakers and things? By the way, how many people know uh, Professor? Uh, uh, Prof, your name is Otege. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, 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 oh, I uh -huh. <laughs> a lot of people know me. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's, it's not just by attending the library, but having knowledge of what the library can offer you and making use of them. That's what we're talking about. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Boa, can we hear from you on this? We'll be happy to share with you on this. Participant, if you want to speak, please just raise your hand and we'll give you the opportunity to do so. Uh, is Mr. Boy there? Otherwise, uh, we are we are running. We, I'm here. We are running out of time. So I'm, I'm here, to... please. I'm here. Mr. I'm here. Boy, please go ahead. Hmm. I, I I I I think um, universities, as some have done, should just come out with a policy that lecturers should stop giving out handout or selling handouts. Once they are able to do this and lecturers are encouraged to use the library they in turn will encourage their students to use the library but once they sell the books normally um i've not done any research but there was an expert from the un unesco we had a conference in the accra and he told us things that shocked us they sell the books they get your index number and everything and it means that it could influence what your marks it means that if you don't buy their books it will go what against you so these are some of the things that they use to induce uh, let, uh, students to buy thank their you very books. much and because we are of running up and then we want to take only two more questions but before we take the questions let me read some contribution from the floor from Teki. it says that administrators are also patrons of libraries for their professional development so if they become active users of library, they will realize the high stake that they have in the development of the library. Then another panelist, another participant says that part of the challenge is because the recommended textbook or reading list included in the design of the courses are often not found in the library. This is actually prompting on what? that we have to have updated books in our library to make them relevant, otherwise we will not get people to come and read. This also does not encourage students to visit libraries. So we have a big challenge. We need to have modern books. Again, another participant and the last one say, in most universities abroad and, and local, orientation sessions, uh, uh, sorry, just a minute, orientation sessions are organized for particularly first year student in order to groom them uh, onto the culture of using the library throughout the academic life on campus. However, most of our universities are yet to integrate that in the orientation program, and this should actually be encouraged. So Dr. Plucky, take note of this. Probably in our next orientation, you must be there to talk much about the library and get our students to hook onto it. Thank you, Prof. Uh, 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 before I end, there are two more questions, so we're running out of time, so I say we'll end very soon. They say, how does the CCTU library let their students know of what resources are available in the library, and what is the level of patronage of the student? I've already talked about the patronage of the student by the library, so it's just a redundant question. But the main question the, the, that is asked here is that, 
the C the libraries, not just the CCTU, the ATU and all the technical university, how do the library ensure that students are aware of the resources that are available there so that that can market them, attract students for, for, for the patronage? Yes, it's a question for all of us. Yes, yes. Let's so, answer, uh, that question, answer the last one and we'll close. Okay, so f first, so uh, if uh, you must know your patrons and you must know how to reach your patrons. Like Dr. Plucky said, uh, w w every now and then I'll call the SRC president and then the women's commissioner here, tell them about what we have and then the links, give them the link so that they will share it on their platform. That's number one. Number two, there's always forums here, fora that is uh, organized uh, every now and then. Then the librarian must be there, faculty, between faculty and students, between department and students, so that they also know, uh, so that like, their librarian, their li not only the librarian, but library staff must be there to talk about what the library has. And then also, we also have the notice boards and things every now and then. Then CCT, we also have a, a radio, 87.7, Eagle FM. So do, these are some of the channels that we use to make sure we sell our collections to our resources, to our audience. Okay. I think, um, uh, Dr. Plucky, what would you say about that? Dr. Plucky? One of the things we can do to market ourselves, one, is by organizing a forum like this one to create the awareness. Also, like you said, uh, info, uh, user education programs and also we are also trying to come out with a. We are coming out with a literacy information literacy programs, and then also reaching out to student uh, bodies, uh, the SRC, the executives, so that they can involve us in their activities. And through uh, if during these times, we will be there to, I mean, market our resources and let them know what we are available. And I think in the long run, it boils down to information literacy. If we have information literacy program embedded in our curriculum, surely in teaching information classes, some of these things will come up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. The last question that will take a view from all of you and then we we'll close is about the online library. Mr. Said asks, is there a chance for online library? What are the limitations and what are the challenges? And then another also, another person asked a related question. Because of time, I want to put them together. He says, how do you measure the impact of online resources in terms of research output, teaching output, or learning output? Because he thinks they are very costly. And if you have to spend so much to buy online resources, and you can also measure how it impacts on the real activities of the university, then therefore it is questionable. That is where the person is coming from. So these are two questions. Is there a chance for online? What are the limitations? What are the challenges? Second, the online resources are highly uh, expensive. So therefore, what benefit is derived from them? What is the impact on teaching, learning, or research? Is there anything that document that? So these are the two questions. We'll take a view from the three panelists and then uh, the rest of the question will still send it to you by email and we'll also get answers and spread to those who have participated here but because of time i think we'll limit it to this last question so let's have your view we may start with mr viscount boy so that uh, <laughs> we pick it to dr we move to dr atiso and finally to dr plot okay thank you very much uh prof um with online i mean in this era the need for online resources um, ha, um is better felt than even before with COVID, it means that for most parts of the year or most part yes our students will be at home and then they'll have to work learn it means that they have to use the library they cannot have access to what physical um books so it means the year books must come in. The year resources, is, is we have them already. So now we have to do some like blended type of thing. We have the physical books and we have all the year books. So that if you have one year book, it can be read by about five people, depending on the uh, terms of purchase. Five persons what at a time. Then um, we have to make plans that with year book, I mean, the, the, not all year books 
not all books are in e-books. Some are physical. Therefore, if there is a lockdown or students are outside, you have to make provisions. Somebody can access your um, your collection. I need this book. And then uh, we have to send the book to the person by a registered mail for the person to receive, read, and then what send back to what to the library. So these are some of the issues that we have to look at. They are expensive, but uh, they are expensive. But you still have to know uh, purchase them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Tiso. Yes, Prof. Thank you so much. First of all, the role of e-resources in modern times uh, cannot be overemphasized because we say lawyers do what lawyers do. Lawyers, lawyers need resources to work as lawyers. Academicians need resources as academicians, just like that. If you don't buy your e-books or e-resources, what are you going to do? And then the impact. In modern day, you can see that, for, for instance, when we're talking about promotions and things, you need to justify that you qualify for a certain level. The student will need that he justify for a certain grade. What do you need? You need resources. You, you, you need to know what is containing them, digest them, and then come up with your own findings for, for, for people for, for, to justify that you qualify for whatever you are doing. By the way, it is what academicians need to do their job. So we can, there's nothing we can do about them. We need them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question, for the answers. Uh, okay. Dr. Plucky, we are you now. If you could share some few words with us. Yes, from the use resources are a necessary, necessary evil. Mm -hmm. We need them. In okay. fact, we have statistics. You can uh, you can generate statistics for that. And ATU recently we generated some statistics Great. of usage of usage. But the point is, it is people are not aware of their resources. So if we increase uh, the education awareness of this availability of these resources, I believe uh, people will start patronizing it more. We can't stop it. Okay. Yes. Good. Thank you very much. I think uh, too soon we have come to uh, an end of this program. And um, the next on the agenda is to have um, a closing remark from myself as the, pro the acting pro vice chancellor of Accra Technical University. Before I make this remark, um, let me also say that uh, we, our Third panelist, Dr. Marcansoni Kobla, has uh, some challenges and he has to report quickly to the hospital with one of his close related person. And because of that, he couldn't join us and uh, I want to send his apology to all of us. I also want to share, before I give my closing remarks, some few uh, comments from the, the floor. I can read from some people saying, I really enjoy this seminar and the resource persons much appreciation to the organizers for taking their time to organize this virtual event. Aminu also said this is a very good presentation. This is really good. I love it. And we are grateful. And then from other people, yes, nice presentation. Dr. Benata says a quick contribution. We also need to narrow the span of control by appointing faculties and departmental student reps who will inform they are made via social platform like WhatsApp and others. Also from other people, they suggested that one means that you could actually tell the public the kind of books and resources you have is to share with them perhaps a 10 minute video presentation. If each librarian can do that, a 10 minute video presentation that outline the great resources that are sleeping in the library and people are not coming for them. That could actually make a change in contribution. Another person also make a contribution that administrative staff can use the resource in the library, read about uh, the current development in their field to update their skill. From Colette Onibinama, he says, very informative and interesting presentation from Ghanaian senior colleagues. Thanks a lot. And this is from um, uh, Colette. He is from Futo Library in Nigeria. Please, we welcome you. We are very happy to have you on board. 
And then from Rejoice, I really enjoyed this seminar and the resource persons, much appreciation to the organizers. Hope to get more of this. So this will end the few comments I'm reading. There are more comments, but you know, I cannot read all because of times and energy. Now we come finally to the provinces uh, final remarks. My remarks is not much. I think the people have said it all. This has been a very great event and you have really spoken and uh, uh, you have actually brought light to many of the darkness. And many people, student lecturers, faculty, administrative yeah. staff have realized the need of the library in an academic you know, institution. We are all stakeholders and we need to take a move. However, some few issues pops up and it's a good time to inform one that we need to look at the issue of plagiarism and come back with um, a, a, set, a special floor to discuss this so that the student community is aware of these things we have acquired and how we intend to apply them. We need to integrate a lot of presentation from the library in our orientation so that students, even from first year, uh, begin to learn and groom the library habit in all their practices. Also, we realize that we can reach out to students by organizing a series, this event, you know, very often, or making some 10 minute presentation, or even some PowerPoint slides to distribute, you know, on their various platforms. <laughs> We've also realized that technology is impacting too much everything, and library is not an exception. With technology, pro probably people can develop these days some Android application. People can have access on their mobile phone that update them on the content of the library, and many things can happen. We are in a, in a technological age, and we have to take advantage of them. So librarians are really invited to work with students, ICT experts, to develop tools that can enhance their work. We also realize the need of online uh, resources is crucial. They are, even though they are expensive, they are needed. And I'm glad we have statistics to prove this. And from time to time, it is very interesting if our mind can be refreshed with some of these oh, statistics. Okay. Finally, the key point I take for management in this program is the need of resources. Library cannot function properly if resources are not available. And the final advice I'd like to share with my colleagues is that the student and the community will stress the fact that we need to have updated books in our library to make the library interesting and attractive to students and the community at large. But again, this comes with a lot of commitment. Please, let's do the best to get our book updated in our library. We conducted some accreditation check recently. We went to some university and we realized that the books, are some, some of them are more than 30 years old and there is no recent one. And therefore, how do we expect the student to embrace, you know, the library? So is that if all on us to, to, to do the best, we need to, to, to move and get our library finished with state-of-the-art books. Management on the other side will show commitment to support the library activity and increased academic activity as a whole in the university. Thank you very much. We will limit it here. And then we shall call upon Mrs. Selikem to give us a vote of thank, and after which we we'll have a closing remark, a closing prayer from uh, the floor. Is Mrs. Selikem Arona? Yes, I'm here. Please, yeah. we'll be glad if you could give us. Thank you a vote very of much, Prof. Prof. Um, I'm so glad to be called. We cannot see you. Can you see her? I'm here. Please, can you see me? We, we can see I'm, you now. Please go ahead. Okay. So, thank you for calling me to give the vote of thanks. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation to for Dr. Flocky for the explanation on academic libraries' contribution to teaching, learning, and research in universities. So, Doctor, we are so grateful. We are we are so happy to have you to expound things to us, especially on the point that libraries have technical um, duties to perform. These are very, very. Um, they are very, very. There are lots, a lot of duties which people don't see around. So, 
people will just pass that and think that oh the librarians they are just sitting down they are not doing anything we do a lot of things thank you very much doctor then i also want to thank uh, mr viscous buenote boy for giving us that secret for opening our minds to the fact that library use and academic performance is is correlated so the more we use the library the more we interact with the library and we are taught how to search for information how to get the information we want we would have we, we would achieve a lot we will achieve high standards in our academic performance then we also want to thank miss dr atiso dr atiso we want to thank you for your speech on the main goal of a university library we appreciate that so much then we also want to thank dr mark anthony for coming around but because of his the challenges he couldn't make it we are so grateful then i also want to continue to thank professor amavi for making his been making time to moderate this program, this webinar. We are so grateful. And I also want to thank the webinar team. You've been so great. We appreciate your, 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 your contributions, especially the technical people like Mr. AJ, Obed AJ, Mr. Uh, Albert Menuteria, Mr. Victor Bedao, Miss Gifty, Miss Gifty Messi Ansa, then Mrs. Soa. We just want to say we are so grateful. And we also want to thank all the attendees for making time to join us. We'll be having more of such. We want the library to, we want to interact more with you. We want you to succeed in your academic pursuit. So we are also making all our, all the efforts that we need to make in that regard. So thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Expect thank us you. next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank bro. you very much. So we also take advantage to thank the student. The student community is also there, and they have given us an, a very great support. They are still in the auditorium, and uh, they've, they've been with us from the beginning to the end. And they promise that in our next series, they are even going to be more. So we have forgotten Messi. Messi, can you take over from here? Um, yes, please, Prof. I would want to um, let the students and every participant know that this is a program we're going to have in every two months. So the next um, program would be held in December, God willing. Thank you. Thank you. Could you call somebody for the closing prayer? Yes, please. We will call Mrs. Doglo to give us the closing prayer. All right. Thank you. We just want to close our eyes. And... Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for a successful program. We thank you, O oh Lord, for everything we have learned today. We thank you that we will put it into practice in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank bye you. bye. Bye.